This is going to run the world. So praise God. Praise God. Max, would you come up and join us? Now, praise God for this man. Yeah? <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this testimony. I've never heard it. But I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I've known Max for a, a little while, but um, well, just a few weeks ago, um, we were over in Kirkcaldy and we were having a prayer time at the church. And uh, Max, he had said to me afterwards, he says, um, oh, I'd really like to do the, the forklift certificate course. So he's been here at Blackity side. I've been trying to teach him some of my bad habits, how to drive a forklift. But he's getting on well. So praise be to God what he's doing in this man's life. Max, over to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank every one of you for this privilege to come to tell you about how I had an unsurviving accident with Jesus. You know, when you meet with the original, the fake with the part. I'm a young man. My name is, let me start with my name because I have a long name, he said it. It's a very long name. And so, my name is Adebo Wali Maximus Adelibigbe. I'm from Nigeria, the western part of Nigeria. I'm from Oyo State, precisely. And a young man who grew up as a Muslim. I was born in a Muslim home. And every property my father has, he will build a mosque beside it. Uh, we were just growing with my siblings and um, we don't like people telling us about Jesus Christ. We don't want to discuss about it at all. But before I go further, I want to take us to John chapter 14 from verse 1. Amen. John chapter 14 from verse 1 says, Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I will go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Amen. This is my testimony. One of our friends was preparing for your service. You know, when you finished university and um, he happens to be our neighbor's son as well. And then he has to go for clearance. When you finish university, you, you go serve. You serve your country. And so he just bid us by to go and do his clearance to return back on a Thursday. That was 1995. And lo and behold, he got to Abuja, being the capital city of Nigeria. And on his way back, he couldn't make it home. We all, the news came to us. We all gathered. And we were mourning, thinking of, okay, to take his cuff back and all that. And while we sat down, I heard a very clear voice said to me, can you survive too? 
I thought someone was talking to me, and I looked side. Everybody was crying. After 20 minutes, I heard that voice again. Will you survive too? So I left the midst of the people, and I moved to my house. And I sat down, and I heard that voice again. I looked around me, there was nobody. At least I was in the midst of people. I could say someone said that. But this time, I was in my living room, all alone. So why pondering what kind of voice is this? At the time I need to lay down my head to sleep, I couldn't sleep. That voice keep coming. Each time I want to sleep, that voice keep coming. However, we had some missionaries who have been coming around to preach to us. We just laugh at them. <laughs> forget about these Christ things. You know, we are Muslim. Don't forget it. God do, God do not have any child. God did not give birth to any child. Nobody give birth to God. You know, that's what we Muslims say. <laughs> so when this voice was so much and there were fear all around me, all around me, I was thinking I would be the next person to die. So I don't know what pushed me. And I went to one of those missionaries. And I explained my story to them. And these are the people I don't want to see. And they said to me, we don't have any solution to this. But the only one we have is that if you can try Jesus. I said, leave Jesus. It's not what I want. <laughs> they said, just try Jesus. And you will say, you won't be the same again. That day was the day of my salvation. I said, okay, let me try this Jesus. He said, it's very simple. I said, what do I need to do? He said, just confess your sin. However, before those times, as I was growing up, even as a Muslim, when we get home, we pretend to be clean and holy. But when we are out, I drink, smoke, do all kinds of things. Even I have charms. I put in my pocket for to defend myself. When people come to attack me, I have enough charm in my pocket to attack anybody. So I confess my sin. I was still having some of those things in my pocket. And I said, oh, one of them said, do you have anything you need to take away from your body? I said, oh yeah, I have, I have my ring. And in my belt, I have some charms there. So I remove it. I gave it to them. And they prayed for me. I accept Jesus Christ. After a little while, they gave me water to drink. And I slept off. I haven't slept for three days. And I slept off. And by the time I wake up, it was like God took away something from my life. I had peace. I thought it was a joke. The following day, I couldn't hear that voice again. <clears throat> then I went to tell all my friends and the neighbors. I said, something new has happened to me. They said what? I said, I am born again. Amen. And they, they laughed. <laughs> Don't worry, you're coming back to us. Don't worry, after this barrier, we'll, we'll come back. All of us will still go and hang out. We'll go and drink beer. We're we'll going to do all kinds of things we used to do. I thought it was a joke. I thought I would be like one of those ones that would just say that I confess Jesus and go back. From that day, Jesus do not let me alone. I went to my father. You know, the hardest thing, that is the hardest part of my life. To tell your father, who is busy building mocks in his house here and there, that you are now born again, that you now have Jesus. I went to him. I said, Father, I am born again. 
I said, what do you mean? You want to disgrace me? I said, no, I don't want to disgrace you. I have found peace. I have found a new life. You can try it too. It just sent me away. And at that moment, <laughs> the cloud becomes so cloudy and it's about to rain. And so they throw my things out. And the rain began to fall. While in the rain, do you want to hear the miracle? As the rain, as it was raining, the rain was busy pouring, but not touching my body, not even my property, not even my bag. It was raining heavily, but my body was dry. I see Jesus. I saw the umbrella. I saw a divine umbrella covering me in the rain. And while standing there, the Lord has gone to speak to those missionaries that I am in trouble. And so they came. They said, the Lord speak to us, you are in trouble, that we need to come to you. And so they came. And they took me to their house. And from that day, I said, Lord, if you can use these people, you will start from now to use me. And from that day, I said, if you really call these people to talk about Jesus, you will have to call me today. I told them, where is the next place you are going? They said they are going to a village to preach the gospel. And I began to use my life as a testimony to talk about Jesus Christ. What has Jesus done for you? Many a times, I ask the question in the high streets, Kekodi. Where is the legacy your forefathers left behind? They brought the gospel to Africa. We took the gospel. And I am enjoying it. I have life. Where is the legacy Mary's lesson left behind? Where is the legacy all these great men of God left behind? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one come to the Father except by me. I am very passionate to talk about Jesus. Everywhere I will go, I will talk about Jesus. I was looking for a job sometime, and they don't want me to talk about anything God. I said to them, if you don't want me to talk about Jesus, take your job. He is able to sustain me. For the past four months, I've not been working. But God is sustaining me and my family. I want to tell you, you have the privilege now that you are alive. Many of us, we have left our children at home while we visit church. It is not about religion. Let no gathering be about religion. Let your gathering be about Jesus Christ. Because religion will never take you to heaven. But if you give your life to Jesus and stand by it. In fact, one of the terrible things I went through was my father went to tell the community of the Muslims in my family. And they gather to deal with me. And that day, God showed them another part too. They raised their hands to flog me. And every one of them that flogged me that day they called back to come and ask me to pray for them. Because when they woke up in the morning, they couldn't raise their hands up. And so they needed solution to it. And the only solution is for me to pray for them. As after praying for them, they looked at me. And from that day, none of them troubled me again. You don't know how it looks like when you give your life to Christ as a Muslim from Africa. It's a very hard time. Many died through it. In the northern part of Nigeria, many who prefer Christian, Christ, they die. They've been slaughtered. And these things are happening daily. I come to ask you again, what will you do to win souls? What will you do 
to talk about Jesus Christ. We are afraid to talk about Jesus. We think everything is about religion. It is not about religion. The world is becoming complex. The only solution is Jesus. The Bible says, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Obey the Lord and keep his commandments. For this is the old duty of man. Have you preached Jesus this week? Have you talked about Jesus? Have you preached to somebody about Jesus? If you have not done that to your children, to your own children, you, need, you have a time to do that. Because the night will come, and the time will come when you will raise, we want to raise your hand, you won't be able to raise it. We are all going closer to go out of this world. I might look very young to you, how long ago to live is not what matters, but how well have I been able to represent God in my generation? Now, what will you do to tell somebody about Jesus? What will it cost you? It doesn't cost anything. They will abuse you. They will yell on you. But you need to talk about Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Say, no one come to the Father except by me. The Muslim people go on to tell people about God don't have a child. And I ask them a question, the simple questions. Do you have a child? One of them said yes. I said, who originated that? It is God. The Bible says, go and multiply. So if you can have a child, and that is God's plan, God has a child. And the child of God is Jesus. And Jesus begot us as his children. We become biological, biological child of God spiritually in our life. And so do not allow anybody to deceive you. It is real. Christ is real. Don't be the one that will cross over and realize that everything we've been talking about Jesus is real. Because when we die, there is no repentance. After grave, grave, after this earth, there is no repentance. It is now that we have grace and mercy. When we cross over, there is no grace and mercy. It is salvation. It is what have you done? We give account of everything that we have done on earth. What will be your account? And what will people say after you have left this world? We will we remember by the war we have done. We sing that song all the time. Will you be remembered for preaching the gospel? May the Lord bless you and keep you and sustain you in Jesus' name. Thank you for me. <clears throat> oh, thank you, brother. Thank you so much. <clears throat> it's just amazing listening to this man's testimony. And they overcame the enemy. <clears throat> By the power of the word and of their testimony of what the Lord has done for them. Yeah? Amen. Praise be to God. The Lord has given this man a, an awesome light into the gospel and great courage to speak the gospel all around the world. Max, thank you so much for your great work. An ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord wants to know. Are you an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ? What is an apostle? An apostle is a very, very difficult road to follow. You've got to pick up that cross and you've got to follow the Lord with all your might and with all your strength. And if you don't, you're not an apostle. But I see, brother, you are. So God bless, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <clears throat>